I, you have to excuse me. For those of you that have been following me for long enough, you know there are a lot of mosquitoes around here. I live in Puerto Rico, and I just, I'm like, I'm paranoid. I'm like, them, them skaters! Okay, anyway. In the, the woo! Hey everyone, I've been kind of wanting to do more vloggy type thing where instead of, you know, just relying solely on cards to bring a message in, we talk about it. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about the process of healing and how I've come to understand it and some of the discrepancies or maybe the miscommunications or maybe the confusion when it comes to how to actually really deal with pain and how to evolve from it, how to grow from it, how to level up from it. And this is a this is a continuation of what we've been talking about in Morning Coffee over the last, the past week. And uh, if you are coming into this, if you're new to me or that you're new to my channel or anything like that, hi, my name is Eric. But in the top right of your screen here, I will put maybe one or maybe multiple suggested videos that will allow you guys to like kind of catch up if you're new, if you haven't been following with morning coffee or whatnot. And if you're new to me completely, then hi, my name is Eric. I am an intuitive tarot and oracle card reader, and I do a daily reading on YouTube called Morning Coffee, in which I use tarot, tarot and oracle cards, well, mainly tarot, to talk about the energies that we are going through in any given moment. So welcome to my little sanctuary here. Uh, this is part of the backyard that, of the house that I live in here in Puerto Rico. And this is very much my sanctuary. I really love to come down to this spot specifically to sit and to meditate and connect with nature and just vibe with things, right? Um, and I thought this would be the perfect setting for us to have this discussion. Yeah? Um, so welcome. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So, what are we talking about here? Well, let's start with what we've been talking about. There has been, over, over the last few months, and um, we'll say since the, the fall of 2020, that fall season, um, into the winter of 2020, and now moving into the spring season of 2021, spring and subsequently summer, uh, we were going through the natural process of um, life to death to rebirth, okay? And so, you know, 2020 was a crazy year, um, but by the time the fall came, which was effectively us moving into feminine season, in which death happens, in which, you know, uh, trees lose their leaves, flowers die, uh, animals go into uh, hibernation and all of that, you know, everything slows down, everything comes to a stop, everything seems to die off and go into a bit of an underground hibernation mode. And within that hibernation, that underground hibernation, that death mode, we are provided with an opportunity to reshape ourselves, reshape our reality, and get ready to re-emerge re re during masculine season, which starts in the spring, moves, to the, moves through the summer, and then after the summer, we recycle back into that feminine season, that death season. But this year, I mean, again, 2020 was a crazy year, but this cycle seems to have been really quite profound because it triggered some pretty extreme death. And for me personally, as a reader and as a channeler and as someone that's, you know, working with the energies myself and kind of using my own story to help guide other people through their situations, I've found that I've gone through a really massive change in perspective, which ultimately gave rise to a change in my reality and a change in my experience. And I have been calling this an ego death because for me it was representative or excuse me it was represented by going within and figuring out who it is i truly am and juxtapositioning that against the person that i have grown into or maybe i'm hearing myself say allowed myself to be or maybe even forced myself to be and how those two contrast and how to heal from that so that I can allow more of my true nature, 
more of who I truly am, more of who or what I truly represent in my existence in this world, I could let that shine through even more. And what, we're, what I want to talk about here in this session or in this video is the process of healing and what it really takes to heal and what it is you do have to do and what it is you don't necessarily have to do in order to heal. Please understand that this, this is solely from my own perspective and from my experience and how I've been able to successfully do these things and accomplish this in this way. Now, this is a continuation of, um, again, what I've been talking about in Morning Coffee. And so this is kind of a follow-up to the Morning Coffee that was released this past Friday, or at least the, I believe, the 16th of April. Um, and that morning coffee session is, is titled, The Choice to Heal is Yours. And again, I'll put a link to that right here. Uh, but the topic of discussion here is kind of, yes, is related to that morning coffee and is related to the, the round of morning coffee we had been discussing throughout that week. But it also stems from a comment that someone left in which they were talking about their confusion, I guess, or their inability to really decipher which way is the best way in terms of healing. And so uh, it was asked, it was suggested that I talk about it in Morning Coffee, but I feel like, I feel like it would have done, it's, it's doing more justice to really have a separate session involved or in terms of this. And I kind of wanted to be like all good and, and, um, and you know, prim and proper and, and, and write all my thoughts down and get an outline going so that, you know, I didn't miss anything. But as soon as I sat down to try and write everything, I just got blocked. So I was like, you know what? Let's just fucking wing it. Like, I don't care. Not that I don't care, but like, let's just wing it. Let's just get in the moment and let's just feel it out. And it is what it is. Okay, excellent. So here we are. So what was I talking about in that, in these morning coffee sessions? I have been talking about the process of healing and what I've come to understand that truly takes. From my perspective, healing takes sitting with your pain, sitting with your experiences, sitting with your emotions and feeling it. But the confusion lies in some people or, or, or certain individuals feeling like they're doing all that and nothing is changing. And there is this, there's a popular channeler and a popular collective consciousness that has come through to help guide us. They go by the name of Abraham Hicks. Uh, Abraham is the name of the conscious, the collective consciousness. Hicks is the name of the woman that channels them. Her name is Esther Hicks. And they've combined themselves, they work together to bring guidance and information from a higher perspective, from a higher dimensional perspective. And I will say that I 100% endorse and recommend that anybody listen to and really start to work with the teachings of Abraham and, and the theories that Abraham brings forward through the channel of Esther Hicks because of the fact that I personally resonated with it really, really quite well and quite a lot um, at a certain point in my journey. At this point in my journey, I don't really, I don't really listen to that, to, to, to them any longer, just because I feel like at this point I've gotten the value that I've needed from it. Doesn't mean that I won't approach it uh, or I won't come back to it later. But right now I have a sufficient amount of understanding in terms of what Abraham brings to the table to not really have to follow up with that any longer. But that's not to say others, others shouldn't do it too. Like honestly, if it works for you, if it vibes for you, then let's talk about it. But it was the theory, it was, it was what Abraham was bringing forward that was kind of causing some confusion here. And so that's really what I wanna talk about because I feel like the teachings of Abraham, if you resonate with that, if you find that and it works for you, I highly recommend you keep with it. But I feel like there is a very fine line between what Abraham has been saying and what I'm been, I've been saying here in terms of healing. So what does Abraham say? Abraham says to 
and 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 this is something that I've even said. I've I've reiterated this. I've used this in the readings that I do. Like I've tried to share this theory because I highly rec I, I I highly resonate with it. But Abraham talks about using your emotions as a guide, using that feeling good place as a guide to which you are in the understanding that you are going in the right direction or you're going after what is in alignment with you when you are in that good feeling place. And when you get to that place where you're no longer feeling good, where your thoughts are, are, are causing pain or turmoil or something within you, that's when you know that you're not going in the right direction or at least you're heading in a, in a direction of something that does not resonate for you. And in that moment, what you need to do is to change your thoughts. So using your emotions as your compass. And I definitely resonate with that. And I see that as in the major arcana of the tarot, I see that as the chariot. The chariot talks about um, using your emotions, getting your emotions in check, balancing your emotions, both positive and negative, getting those in check and in balance and using your emotions to drive you forward. And that's what I feel like is reflected in Abraham's teachings of using your emotions as a compass or a guide. If you're not feeling so good, if you're wrapped up in thoughts that lower your vibration, if you're wrapped up in emotions that are low in vibration or just not don't feel good to you, change your focus so that you are focusing on what brings you bliss, what brings you happiness, what makes you feel good, what makes you feel lighter, because that's when you know that you're going in a direction that serves you, that is in alignment with who you are, that's in alignment with what you're trying to do, that's in alignment with the direction that you're trying to move in. So I highly recommend that people work on practicing that. But that's not what we're talking about when it comes, or at least what I'm talking about, when it comes to healing from trauma and pain. And that's where this fine line comes into play. Because when I think of what Abraham is talking about, I think of those situations, those circumstances in which you're caught up in ego battles within yourself, you're caught up in those moments where you're like, oh, I should have done this, or I should have done that, or oh my God, I can't believe I said that, or oh my God, I can't believe I did that, and worrying about the, the future and getting caught up and worrying about the past in ways that, in circumstances in which like the, the past is the past, you can't change it. So focusing in that sense or focusing on what's going to happen in the future. Am I going to be able to make enough money? Am I going to be able to support myself? Am I going to be able to, to get a stable job or a good job? And am I, am I going to be able to do the things that I really want to do? Am I even going in the right direction? Those kinds of worries. That's what I feel like Abraham is talking about when they, when they bring their message forward. But when it comes to healing, when it comes to dealing with past trauma or dealing with past circumstances, whether that be from childhood or just earlier in life or, or a previous stage in your life in which it generated a sense of trauma for you. When it comes to that, I don't feel that the somewhat passive approach that Abraham talks about is appropriate here. And this is what we've been talking about in this round of morning coffee readings that we that I that I mentioned that basically gave rise to this video here. In terms of healing from situations such as those, my personal opinion and what I've found, and it is my opinion and it is what I want to share with you, but I also I'm sharing it. Yes, it's my opinion, but I'm sharing it because it is working for me. It is my opinion that when you're dealing with trauma, when you're dealing with conditioning, when you're dealing with circumstances that you need to heal from, it is not beneficial to play the escapism game. Yes, escapism can be helpful, can be useful when it comes to needing to disconnect and needing to take a break and needing to just like not focus on it any longer. But if you're going to heal from situations like this, you need to face it. You need to feel it. You need to allow the memories of this trauma or this circumstance to surface and you need to face them. Because the longer that you don't, 
the more that you push these circumstances away saying, I don't want to feel this. I don't want to think about this. I'm not, I don't want to do this. This ne well, maybe, okay. Maybe in some cases, some people are in this energy saying, whatever, this never happened. Let's just pretend it never happened. Blah, blah, blah. That's not going to help you because that's not going to deal with the trauma that needs to be dealt with. And this is a hard thing for us in this human three dimensional existence to understand, to wrap our minds around. But no matter what the trauma was, no matter how bad it was, and please understand that I am in no way trying to um, devalue anyone's experience, but no matter how extreme the situation was, ultimately there's something that our souls are trying to learn from it. And in that learning comes expansion. We'll touch on expansion in a second. But in that learning comes expansion. And in order to learn from it, in order to heal from it, in order to see through it, in order to see it for what it truly is and gain the nuggets of wisdom, you have to face it. You cannot run from it. Because the more you run from it, the more you're sweeping it under the rug and the more you're in essence pushing away shadow elements of your life or maybe even shadow elements of yourself that are needing to be integrated, that are wanting to be integrated, that are wanting to be seen, that are wanting to be heard. And that's where we get into the topic of shadow work. And there is a very different, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a difference between maintaining your alignment in the way that Abraham, in my opinion, in the way that Abraham talks about it, in terms of not letting yourself get wrapped up in the what ifs, not get letting yourself get wrapped up in the doomsday mind mentality, the, 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 the lower vibrations, the fear, okay? There's a difference between maintaining your alignment to make sure that you're going in the right direction and doing shadow work. The only way to do shadow work is to dive into it, to feel it, to express it, to notice it, to look at it. So what that means for me, using my experience as an example for you guys, I have been able to identify the moments where I'm wrapped up in fear and that fear tends to be wrapped up or, or tends to be related to uh, life circumstances. Am I going to make enough money? Am I really supported by the universe? Am I going to be able to pay my bills this month? Am I going to be able to do the things that I love to do? Am I good enough to do the things that I love to do? Am I created enough? All of that stuff, right? That's the type of energy that takes you out of alignment and puts you in direct opposition to what it is you're trying to, to express or to feel or to, to move towards. Then there was another topic or another side of the situation in which there were memories coming up and there were traumatic experiences coming up such as betrayal, rejection, um, and, and things like that. That is the type of situation that I'm talking about. And for me, I could not continue to run from those feelings or from those thoughts or from those memories any longer. And I kind of explained this in Morning Coffee, but I'll, I'll go into it more now. There was a moment in my life right before I reached that big awakening in which I started to really start to get comfortable with my psychic ability with um, being an energy worker and being a channeler. Right before that big awakening I, awakening, I went through a number of years in which I was starting to go through the process of awakening. And at that time, there were a lot of things that were coming up from childhood, a lot of traumatic experiences and a lot of condition, a lot of conditioning that was surfacing in my life but I had the habit of pushing those things away and I did that because of what I was hearing from the gurus and everything and in terms of like law of attraction which is what Abraham really talks about he talks about they talk about law of attraction but I was consciously and and purposefully pushing those feelings away pushing those experience away experiences away, but mainly because of the fact that I believed or I felt that the more that I focused on them, if I gave them any conscious attention, I would only effectively keep that energetic cycle going and thus creating more of that situation in my life. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted to, 
I wanted it to go away. I didn't want I, I didn't want to be affected by that any longer. I didn't want to be a slave to that. I didn't want that to be an element of my life any longer. So I did what I thought was right to do and I pushed it away and I didn't face it. I didn't focus on it. I didn't look into it. I was effectively pushing these elements away, not realizing that I was only prolonging the healing process that was trying to be initiated here. And ultimately, that was causing energetic blockages in my system. And I felt it, uh, most of my energetic work on a personal level has to do with my heart chakra. And that's fairly common. I know, you know, there are other people that have certain discrepancies that they're working on that are really challenging for them. Me, the most challenging, uh, 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 the most challenging thing is healing my heart, okay? So, in pushing all of these things away, in not focusing on them, in redirecting my attention to things that would potentially make me feel better in the moment, I was effectively causing an energetic blockage in my, in my system. And I, it, it, I felt it, it, the physical manifestation of it represented itself in extreme back pain. Like there was a knot in the top right of my back, my masculine side. Um, you know, your masculine side is represented by the right side of your body. The left side is your feminine side. My inability or my refusal, my refusal to deal with this, my refusal to face it, my refusal to focus on it in, in, in terms of understanding it, to heal it, was creating an energetic blockage. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. It's not about focusing on this energy or focusing on this these traumatic events or these memories or whatever is trying to surface for you it's not about pushing it away and it's not about focusing on it in a way that you're just you're constantly reliving it over and over and over and over and over again and not really getting anywhere it's about allowing yourself to relive it at a mo at a, at a certain moment and maybe maybe the term reliving it isn't the most appropriate. I do kind of feel like that's triggering some people here. Um, but for lack of a better term, we'll say relive it to a certain extent. Seeing it for what it is. When it comes up for you, instead of pushing it away, focusing on it so that you can understand it. But you're focusing on it so that you can learn from it. So that you can work on, number one, not being so hurt by it. In effect, in essence, numbing yourself to it, but not numbing yourself by escaping, numbing yourself by standing in it and feeling it so that it, as time goes on, you build strength, right? But also focusing on it and seeing it for what it truly is in order to learn, in order to understand, in order to take the nuggets of wisdom from that. So we'll say, let's say you were a band abused by a partner and you were victimized here you're a victim in this situation or you can say maybe you were abandoned by a, a by um by somebody you have abandonment issues when those situations come up it's not coming up to torture you it's not coming up to make you feel any worse but there is, a, there, there is a, a method to focusing on it to say, okay, what did that person do that made me, that hurt me so much, that cut me so deep? And then looking at that from a logical point of view and pointing out, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, and that happened. Okay, so we've got the facts. So now, how does that make you feel? Or how did that make you feel? Well. I have abandonment issues. I have trouble letting people in. I have trouble having an open heart. I have trouble trusting people. Okay, excellent. Now, what have you learned from that? Well, I've learned that I can't trust everyone. I've learned that I should keep my heart closed. I've learned that in some cases, these things translate into, I've learned that I, or, or I've, I've developed the, the complex that I'm not good enough. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Because now you're focusing on this situation, you're reliving it in essence, in order to pick out the pieces that are troubling, that are hurting you, that are causing a negative cycle to, 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 to run its course over and over and over. And again, 
the 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 point of this is not to maybe reinforce these negative things that have come up, but it's to become aware of it. Because what I say all the time is you cannot fix something. You cannot heal from something until you're aware of what that something is. And the only way you're going to become aware of what this, whatever this trauma is for you, you're the only way that you're going to be able to become aware of it is if you focus on it, is if you look at it, is if you pick it apart piece by piece, inch by inch. Okay. So this is focusing on it to heal from it. Now, the the next thing that I kind of want to touch on here is um, there's a question of, well, I do all of this and the expansion doesn't come. But quite frankly, I feel like in terms of these situations, I feel like there's a misconception in terms of what this expansion truly is. This expansion tends to show itself in the form of a deeper understanding of yourself, a deeper understanding of life, a deeper understanding of the nature of people, and a deeper understanding of the nature of existence. And this expansion also comes in the form of freedom of your soul. So in essence, this is helping you break down the conditioning, the complexes that may that you may have settled into because of the trauma the social conditioning the learned behaviors and everything that takes you away from being your true full 100 percent authentic self and this expansion comes in terms of getting that foundation within yourself getting that foundation within your soul so that now you can turn around and start to create and start to manifest the life you truly want to live, the truly the life you truly see for yourself, the life you know you're truly meant to live or the life you feel is really meant for you. The expansion comes in now being free and clear and happy and in a position to now really create. Because the life that you are meant to live is the life that you are meant to create. This is not something that's just going to happen for you. The universe just doesn't come in and give you what you want just by completely sitting there and doing nothing. Yes, there is a lot of energy of needing to fall back and allow the universe to work for you. But you have to be in that magician place, that master manifester place to take the action that's necessary for you to create the life that you want to live for yourself. And that can't happen if you're being bogged down by the trauma and the past circumstances that you're refusing to deal with. I mean, I'm not one to really sugarcoat things. At this point, it comes, it, the reality of the situation is by continually sweeping it under the rug, by continually trying to escape from it, you're refusing to deal with it. And you're effectively keeping yourself in that place of not being able to manifest because all of your energy is being taken up by not dealing with what desperately needs to be dealt with. And that's where we get into shadow work. That is the truth of shadow work. Your shadow is not something to be rejected. Your shadow is not something to be demonized. Your shadow is not something, your shadow elements are not anything to be pushed away. It's exact, it's quite frankly the exact opposite. Your shadow is a fragmented or multiple fragmented pieces of yourself that desperately need integration. And that's why we say, or we, we experience situations in which the more we push things away, the more we refuse to deal with it, the worse and worse and worse it gets, the more and more painful it gets. It becomes bigger and bigger, it festers, and it, it, it almost takes, uh, takes, not almost, it literally takes on a life of its own. And that effectively takes away from the life you're truly meant to live. The only way to heal from shadow elements is to face them and integrate them. Now, the next thing I want to say in terms of this integration is 
This integration requires you to take responsibility for your own healing. Now, common misconception with that is, when we say taking responsibility, some people automatically translate that into, well, I guess I'm responsible for the abuse that someone put upon me. And that is wildly inaccurate, okay? Especially if you are, if you are a victim of abuse as a young child as a young child, as an adolescent, as even a teenager. Now, I don't mean to that I don't mean that to diminish from any sort of abuse or trauma that has that you have gone through as an adult. But children and young adults and adolescent individuals are a little bit of a different playing field. And that often tends to be something that people snap to. Well, well, what about the child that was that was sexually assaulted? No, 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 no. No matter what the trauma you've been through, your responsibility is not the actions of other people. Your responsibility lies in taking your power back and healing from it, learning from it. And in many cases, some people will say, well, I don't even understand what's there to me, for me to learn from this. I was, I was sexually abused. What am I supposed to learn about that from myself? And in that case, or for myself, excuse me, in that case, maybe you were meant to go through that so that you could understand certain elements of it and then take your story out to the world to help others or to be an advocate. Uh, a big thing that I like to say, and something that I truly believe is, you can never say that you truly know something until you've experienced it. No matter, no matter how much you want to be there to help people, you will never truly understand a situation until you actually experience it for yourself. You will forever be on the outside looking in. And that's a big part of life here. Our souls come down into these meat suits, into these physical bodies to experience and to gain the knowledge and the wisdom within that experience. Another element to our life here, our existence here, is learning to be master manifestors. And it seems that the struggle and the trauma of being stripped of our memories of who we truly are as beings, as individuals, and effectively having our power taken away from us by those that just wish to control, it seems that that lesson as, from the soul point of view is so incredibly valuable because from there you have the journey of reclaiming that power ahead of you. And once you are able to reclaim that power, you are infinitely strong. No, it's not going to be easy, but yes, you are capable of it. So here's the fine line. There's escapism and there is, there, there is a time and a place for escapism. Yes, 100%. And then there's facing it, dealing with it, diving into it and really living it, experiencing it, maybe even reliving it so that you can learn from it. You can grow from it. Escapism helps in certain situations. I know for me, I've actually learned to use escapism to my advantage, but I use escapism to allow myself to occupy my conscious mind so that it can't get in the way. So that when there are things that need to come up or if there are things that are coming up that I need to deal with, I occupy my conscious mind with some form of escapism, usually in the form of video games, not even going to lie, but I use that form of escapism to occupy my conscious mind so that my subconscious can communicate with me. And as I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing, let's say I'm playing Planet Coaster or I'm playing Factorio and I'm, I'm focused on building something in the game. I can then take the pieces that my subconscious is throwing at me and process them without my conscious mind getting in the way. That 
is where I feel like escapism and shadow work can go hand in hand. But when it comes to escapism, to not feel something, to me, I feel that is a detriment to you because you're not giving yourself the opportunity to really focus on something in order to heal from it. Yes? There was also a question, uh, and, and this, this, this whole video is, um, was inspired by a comment. And I'm very grateful for that comment because it was something, I'm really, really grateful because this is really something that we need to talk about here. But there was also a question within that comment that said, what about the people that feel too much? Well, first of all, I'm an empath, baby girl. And many of us here that really resonate, and especially those of you that are, have been following me here on my channel for long enough, we are empaths. And we often feel, we often get overwhelmed by our feelings. And there are certain cases in which if you're just being overwhelmed, you need to allow yourself to take a break. Escapism is your, is your friend. But, and this is where that shadow work comes in. This is where that expansion comes in that you may not necessarily be recognizing. But the more you allow yourself to feel your pain, to really feel it, to, to, to sit with it, the more you build your emotional strength and your empathic strength. It's literally like strength training, going to the gym and lifting weights. But instead of lifting physical weights, you're lifting the weight of emotion. If you have been blessed to be in this world, on this planet, at this time in human history, and, and identify as truly feel like you, I literally, I truly identify as an empath. And yes, I said blessed for a reason. I meant that. Then you also have an extra responsibility. Because I truly believe, and I have taken up this charge myself, and I'm not saying that anybody, that everybody that's listening to this now, you have to just take up this charge if you're not ready. But I truly believe that if you are blessed enough to be in this world at this moment in human history and be open and be in tune with your, your, your empathic ability, and a, by, which quite frankly, everybody has, by the way, but not everyone is open to it. But if you are one of the few that are open to it, then yes, you do have an extra responsibility. And that responsibility is to build your emotional strength so that you can help show the world that our emotions are not our enemy. That being or feeling emotion, being able to connect with the realm of spirit and the realm of emotion does not make you weak. It actually makes you much stronger than anyone else could ever imagine. But in order to get there, you literally have to do the strength training. There's no other way around it. I guess that's it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I truly hope this was helpful for you. Um, I love you all so, so, so very much. I encourage you guys to share your thoughts and your feelings in the comments section. I definitely think we should allow this to be a discussion. If there are any more questions or if there's some way that we could do like a follow up to this, please let me know. And I would love to dive into this more. Maybe, maybe we could even have a live session about it. I don't know. But with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah. Take care. Bye.